Alhamdulillah, I love the Angela, I love the Kitaba. Wahlam, a Yajala, I watch at Madu, Sapanu, who were the Isla, wa Askuru, or who were at the Hamda with Thana. Or I shadow on La, Ella, Ella, what the Hula, Shrikalahu, or I shadow on Mohammed and Abdu, a Mustafa. Allah Homa Salim was Salim, I love the cover of Sulika, Mohammed and Wadi was a few was Salim. Alhamdulillah, I love the we thank Allah Almighty always. It is just phenomenal and amazing that just by the remembrance of Allah Almighty, it has a transforming power. You may see that transformation right before your very eyes based on the sincerity and the focus and the connection that human beings have toward Allah Almighty. Because Allah says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein. This is our juggler vein. This is the main artery that supplies the blood to our hearts. And Allah says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein. So, that means at any time that we uh, can, uh, or we want to move from dunya to maula to Allah Almighty, it can happen in a blink of an eye. Just a blink of an eye. But shaitan, uh, his whole purpose is to make us to forget, to have us to rely on only those things that we can touch, that we can see, so that we will always be dependent on anything and everything other than Allah Almighty. The, our whole existence, our whole existence is to depend on Allah Almighty only. Nothing else. I mean, why did, why did Allah Almighty send the prophets? Why was it necessary for Allah Almighty to send prophets to human beings? So Allah gave his word he, that the promise was made. We all made that promise before coming to this life. But... Allah says, if you're going to promise to me, then I will keep my promise to you. And I'm always going to have hidden, deli hidden delights for you. Hidden delights. I think that when a mentality starts to understand and appreciate that we are from Allah and we return, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother being that exists on the physical planet. It's a whole nother realm of reality that those people experience. And that's why Allah says they are the best of people evolved for mankind. The best of people evolved for human beings. Now that's got to be something catastrophic. That has to be beyond anyone's ability to see and to know. That has to be phenomenal. That has to be the most phenomenal news. That has to be the best news that anyone could ever be told. But the thing is this. We don't believe it. Belief is everything. Belief is everything. Allah says in Quran, "Aaudhu billahi min shaitan rajim." Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif, lam, mim. Only does the alif lam mim you can't translate it uh, through someone's intellect. If each letter alif, the lam, and the mim 
it, it, it's so much depth. It's a heavenly power that Allah Almighty sends right after He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then Allah Almighty says, Aleph, Lam, Mim. He's given some letters, three letters. A power. See, because the thing is, when, you, when you're reading the Quran, if you open up the Quran and you're reading it like a scientist or you're reading it uh, to uh, get definitions, because we know that the most read book and studied book is the dictionary, people are getting dictionaries, getting uh, definitions so they may understand how to talk to each other. But this is not that. This is not that. Allah Almighty is articulating His promise through revelation, through His words. But more than that, Allah Almighty is sending examples of what He's saying. He's raising up examples of what He's saying. That power, those three letters, Alif Lam Mim, those three letters has to represent somebody's station. Because it's not for the intellect. And Allah Almighty sends examples of what he's talking about. So somebody has to be present to represent what he's saying. When we are open, our minds are open, our hearts are open, and we're controlling our physical power by allowing our spiritual power to have a dominance because we're returning, off returning to that part of us that's connected to the heavens. Now then is the beginning of our understanding. That starts the power and the glory and the love and the respect that one has to have for their existence because they're no longer thinking about they respected themselves through their intellect or what their intellectual pursuits have brought them in a realm of respect in the earthly world of titles and being accepted by people. This is a whole nother realm of reality that these people experience on a second by second basis and they're able to change the environment. They're able to take us from a low place to a high life in a matter of seconds. Because they're connected to their power. They believe. They are believers. They believe in the promise that they made to Allah. They were consistent and they were true and sincere with that promise. And they believe when Allah says, if you promise me and keep your promise, I will promise you and keep my promise to you. Thereby, they made a covenant that was not, that is, cannot be broken. So wherever they are, <clears throat> they're with their Lord and their Lord is with them. If their Lord takes them through hell, they're with their Lord, their Lord is with them. If their Lord takes them through the loftiest heights, they're with their Lord and their Lord is with them. Never do they lose their balance of this going up and down, flipping and skipping and tripping about who they are and whose they are. They know with certainty who they are. They know who they made the promise to. They know who made the promise to them. So now, Allah Almighty gives examples of those people who have kept their promise that He keeps their promise to them. So Allah says, these are the verses of the wise book, a guide and a mercy to the doers of good, those who establish regular prayer and give regular charity and have in their hearts the assurance of the hereafter. These are the true guidance. These are on true guidance from their Lord and these are the ones who will prosper. Allah tells you about those people. And He gives us examples about those people. 
So who were the prophets? The prophets were those people. To be an example of what Allah Almighty was saying. When the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came, that that word that Allah Almighty, or that promise that he had made with beloved Muhammad Sallallahu and the promise that beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi made with Allah Almighty, that promise was reopened. Because 40 years, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was just around the people. He was like a regular Joe around the people. Going, just going and, 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 and trying to find himself and, and uh, dealing with the everyday uh, uh, problems of life of human beings and, and the, uh, the inhumanity to human beings and uh, the lack thereof of human beings, the, the ignorance of human beings, and all of these things he was dealing with. But Allah Almighty had hidden from him hidden delights because in his heart he was sincere even though Allah veiled him from the promise. Allah veiled him from when he took that promise before coming here. He remained in his heart some kind of sincerity. He used to ask, well, why is this happening? How can this be changed? What can we do? And he never felt good about anything that he knew that was out of order with the people. He never felt comfortable about it. He never kept, felt comfortable with himself doing the other decadent things that everybody else was doing. Still, Allah Almighty is hiding had those hidden delights. He didn't know what he was growing into. But in spite of all the, 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 the terrible, horrible things that was happening to him in his life, you know, and, and, and all the things he was going through, he still, he didn't know that he was keeping his faith by being sincere and having hope. He said, there has to be something better than this. He didn't go to the cave just one time and meditate. He don't even know why he went to the cave. His heart drove him to a place away from the people. So he could just sit with himself and learn about himself. Who, who, who am I? Why am I here? I mean, what is my relationship to these people? Who are these people? What is my relationship to them? Why do I feel the way I feel about what I feel? How is this alternation of the day and the night? They're not colliding. And why is there such a comfort when I look at the sky and see such order? And why is there so much chaos? around me and why do I have such a need just to go off by myself and try to under I'm going off by myself not that I'm going to know anything because how can I know anything by just going off by myself but I'm just feeling just to go off by myself sitting in the cave over and over again he would go and just sit just be by himself. Until he was 40 years old. Some of you are not 40 years old yet. 40 years old is a long time to be without guidance, just wondering about your existence. Here he is, the prophet of Allah Almighty, the seal of the prophet. Allah Almighty right beside his name, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and he did not have a clue. Just think if he would have like allowed himself to be controlled by his lower desires. What if he'd have been inclined to do things that everybody else he saw everybody else doing? He would have never reached to that that Allah Almighty had hidden from him. Allah was testing him. See, don't think that Allah not going to test us. 
It ain't enough to say you believe. What? Okay, you believe. You believe. What do you believe in? First of all, you say you believe. What do you believe in? <coughs> Allah Almighty was showing him what he was feeling. He started to experience what he was feeling. And every time he'd go to the cave, he would want to, he couldn't wait. Every 30 days he was going and just sitting up in the cave. He couldn't understand what's going on. Then Allah Almighty exposed him to Angel Jabril and he almost lost his mind. He almost lost his mind. Here now, Allah Almighty is exposing him to that that he feels. That that he feels, he cannot see. He cannot touch. But now Allah Almighty is showing him what he is feeling. The desires in his heart. These questions that he has about himself, his purpose, why he's here. So now, Allah Almighty now is raising him to do what? Allah Almighty is raising him now to expose all humanity to what he experienced. To bring him also, to bring people also to what he was brought to. And that's why the Sunnah of the Prophet is that everyone has to end up being like the Prophet, peace be upon him, in his relationship to Allah Almighty. See, there really cannot be no God but Allah Almighty. And there really cannot be anyone worthy of worship but Allah Almighty. That has to be our reality. Not just something we say it out of our tongue. That has to be the end all, be all. When that happens, Allah Almighty now begin to use those human beings to be an example of a power that nobody can see or touch. It's a reality in the promise that we took to Allah with, with Allah Almighty. It's in that promise. How can we be obedient servants to Allah Almighty if Allah Almighty did not put the power in us to be obedient servants to Allah Almighty? How could we, Moses part that Red Sea if Allah Almighty had not put the power in him to be able to part that Red Sea? How could Jesus Christ bring that table spread from heaven or bring someone back from the dead if Allah Almighty had not put it in the promise that they made before coming to this life? And so the prophets come to us to say to us, that promise that Allah Almighty made with you and with you with Allah is powerful. There's a power there that is beyond anything you can ever imagine on this side of this world. It is a power that transcends time and space and cause and effect. You don't have to be a slave to something that has a beginning and has an end. Allah is inviting us to be the best of people evolved for mankind. That's a promise. And Allah Almighty is true to his promise. And Allah Almighty is able to keep his promise. But we're not keeping our promise. We're not controlling that part of us that's under control and listening to shaitan. We're so connected into a world that can give us nothing but misery and pain. Because our souls know that once you get so attached to it and loving it so much, you can't take anything with you. There's a misery, there's a reason why we get miserable when we're not eh, getting the dunya that we think. There's a reason for that. <laughs> That's a mercy. Allah is saying, don't get hung up in that. Now, if you really want dunya, to play a, a major part in your life, 
Then keep your promise with Allah Almighty so He can keep His promise with you. And now Dunya will be like your carpet that you may ride, that you may dominate, that you may enjoy the goodness of this life and the goodness of the next life while we're in this life. That's not just something said. Allah Almighty raises up people among us to be examples of that. There has to be examples of that. When Allah Almighty says that we have the ability to control our physical being, and we use our willpower to control our physical being, then Allah Almighty unleashes the power of our spiritual being to take control of that physical being and now we may rise into the heavens while we are still in the physical being. That is phenomenal. That should be the goal, but that's not the goal. <coughs> that's not the goal. Only a few people in all of time have ever acquired that power while they're still in this life. Only a few people. Why only a few people? Why only a few people? Right now, everybody's out. They got the politicians out. They're trying to get their votes. Allah says, hasten to the mosque and remember your Lord so he remember you. So he may ignite that power that promise that he made in you. So Dunya now be at your feet. Now they running at Dunya. Chasing it. Praying. Oh my Lord. Bring me Dunya. Oh my Lord. Please let me be the president. Oh my Lord. Let me be the governor. Let me be the alderman. Let me be the mayor. They're asking for dirt. They don't know what they're asking for. They're lost. They're spending their time running away from Allah. But I tell you what, when Allah Almighty raised up his servants, they're going to be running to Allah Almighty's servants saying, help me please. And those servants of Allah, all they did, when Allah said to do, and they did what Allah said to do. That gave them a power over this dunya and everything in this dunya. This is it's a paradox. They're spending all of their time Running after something they will never conquer. Because now they're showing that they're out of control. Now their spiritual being will never ever give up its secrets and its power. They will never be the best of people evolved for mankind. The prophet used to always say, anybody who's seeking a position, running after a position, don't give it to them. Because they're doing it from their ego. To be caught by shaitan. To be manipulated by shaitan. To be dominated by shaitan. To lose their souls. Jesus Christ said, why gain the world and lose your soul? It's not worth it. We've been tricked. And this is a trick in a trap. Only for those that don't have guidance. Only for those that don't hear and obey. They are the miserable ones. Those best of people evolve for mankind, they are happy. They're happy with their Lord, their Lord is happy with them. They're going to be successful whatever they do because they remember their Lord and their Lord remembers them. And that's why the prophets, they're just examples that would represent the best in us. Shaitan represents the worst in us. And we still choose the worst in us. That means that he has gained a power over, he has seduced our physical body to be his servant. That's why our situation don't change. And that's why we'll always be a dollar shape, a dollar late and a dollar a, a day late and a dollar short. We always be coming up last place. Don't nobody when the people see, see Muslims or think Muslims, they don't think of the best people evolved for mankind. They think of some crazy nuts. They don't even have a clue what a Muslim is. Most Muslims don't have a clue what a Muslim is. 
A true Muslim love their Lord like people love this world. And they seek their Lord like people seek this world. They seek their Lord like we seek our money, our honey, our funny, our sunny. They seek their Lord like that. Now, all of that becomes their servant. Instead of being a servant to that. That's the difference. That's the difference between those people evolve from mankind and those who are not. That's the difference. They have control over the life of this life and the next life in this life. They are the controllers in this life and in the next life in this life. Those others are under control in this life and in the next life. What a miserable ending. We're asking Allah to forgive us here and here after one month if you get fucked with. Alhamdulillahi bilay me wa salatu wa salamu ala kabi musaleem Muhammad al Nabi wa alihi wa sahbi ajmi amaba. Alhamdulillah bilay me. Every trial and tribulation that those people see the thing is is that you can always get blessings. Believers when they go through a trial and tribulation, they say Ola, thank you for the things I like. Thank you for the things I don't like. And they're patient until their Lord takes that off of them. But what it is that Allah Almighty is putting on them, Allah Almighty is giving them a cleaning to even to, because of their good adab, to even have a higher station than they had been given when that trial and tribulation came on them. Then others who are not believers, when those trials and tribulations come on them, it is a punishment for their disobedience. So trials and tribulations come on everybody. It's just like the Prophet Muhammad when he was fighting the wars with those Quraysh, those unbelievers. And they used to come to him and say, Oh Muhammad, we are the same now. You have dead and we have dead. And the Prophet says, No, we're not the same. Our dead are in paradise, your dead are in hell. That's the reality. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? We're so lucky to be blessed with guidance. Why are we showing an appreciation? Why are we happy that we've been to receive guidance and show that guidance to the world? Because Allah Almighty is raising his servants now and they will be known from east to west, north to south. Those are the hidden delights that Allah Almighty have for them because of their, uh, their obedience and their discipline and accepted to be guided. And they will not lose their soul. And they will be just as known as any of the shaitans, but shaitans will lose and be set up and set out. Be a difference because everyone will be given the choice of light and darkness. Everyone will be given the examples of what belief is and what unbelief is. And that has to be shown from east to west, north to south. They will be on everything, all everything that we see that we respect. They will be there, showing that light of their Lord Allah Almighty. Having the smiles of paradise, the light of paradise, and not the darkness or the frowns of hell. So everyone to see, everyone is going to see, everyone is going to see the believers, everyone is going to see the unbelievers. Allah is going to make it so clear. Then they're going to be asked, well, how did you come in that situation? How did you come in that situation? And the people will be able to make their choice as to be here when the kingdom of heaven is being established or to be taken away in humility. Because that's what Allah Almighty is establishing now, not later. It's not something coming. It's something that's here, that's evolving. Those people are getting stronger and more powerful every second. As they gain the power of their physical body, their spiritual body takes them higher and higher and higher. That's the reward that Allah Almighty gives those who keep their promise. 
and Allah keeps his promise, and Allah is the best to keep his promise. So we're asking to be with those whom Allah Almighty has favored, to be among us, to help us, to keep our promise here and here after. One more love, Tafiq al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yamidin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasti'in. Ihdina sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladina anamta alayhim. Ghayru ma'udhubi alayhim wa da'alim. Amin. Qa'at kamil al-Salaam.